All right, this new Webb telescope proved it can detect signs of life in alien atmospheres. And you're using the spectrometers to do this. Let me explain to you. Okay, it's wonderful that they're out there at, at, uh, in the Webb telescope seeing these molecules in space. But here they were at comma 67P, and this is the spectral analysis they took there as they actually landed on that comma. Now let's see what they have to say about this particular spectral analysis. A lot of iron, <clears throat> different types of iron, sodium, silicates, hydrocarbons. Let's see what that means. All right, we're going to be looking at comma 67P. A previous paper on, from this team showed the carbon found on 67P comes in the form of large organic macromolecules. Well, what's a macromolecule? These aren't just little dust. These are chunks of carbon-based life. All right, remember these words. The most important structural element and the reason we are known as carbon-based life. That's what we are. We're carbon-based life forms. 12% of your body is made out of carbon. All right, I'm just going to make a statement. Space is filled with meat. Kentucky meat shower. It rained showers of meat in Kentucky in 1876. You can come back and read about this. All right, space smells like steak. Absolutely, it does. Space may be a giant airless vacuum, which is not true. It's saturated with particles. Astronauts swear it has an odor. Those who have sniffed the aroma liken it to burning metal, steak, and welding. A mother under other peculiar memory, space has its own unique smell. Well, it doesn't have any oxygen to burn, so it gives off these blood gases as metals and welding smells, but it also smells like burning steak, yes. That right there, my friends, is burning meat. Now, this is a tendon enthesis. And what is a tendon enthesis? A tendon enthesis has a ball like this with all these little squiggles in there that lock into bone or muscle. And then it comes out with tendons. These are tendon straps. There is a little ball of muscle. This was attached to somewhere else so that it could pull back and forth like this, but this is also attached to this ball. This is the erosion, literally the spectral analysis of this, these, these particles are those macro carbon molecules which are blood gases and metals and all that stuff attached to carbons. Now this is this particular area in here is nothing more than little hooks that hook in. They do not emit gases because there's no blood in those. The gases will be emitted from right in this area here, which is where blood vessels go up to service the muscle that would have been up above. Tendons only go up so far and then they break off at the muscle. And the muscle itself is very weak and, and has been ripped apart. And this is exactly what you find in an abrupt transition in an Achilles tendon, almost identical. All right, so don't forget, we got blood gases. Well, where, where is that smoke coming from that fills the universe with the smell of steak? It'll only come from where there is blood. There is no blood in an anchor. The anchor has no real bloody squirty spots, only the blood vessels and the artery. And I will show you that right now. All right, precisely as I said, no emissions from here, even though we have direct sunlight rays hitting here. And that's why these gas off, because of the intense rays. You see these? This would have been blood vessels. These are all little tiny blood vessels that are coming up to service the tissue. That, my friends, is the artery. And that thing is just absolutely huge. I mean, it's, it's huge. And these are the anchors. You see these little anchors here? This is where it would have been into the bone or into the muscle, right to that level. Right to this level right here would have locked it in. And then this pulls the muscle and the tendon. And those tendon straps, as I showed you, are identical. Well, they are tendon straps. All right, you saw there was no emissions from this area because there's no real blood flow. 
up here we had the blood flow and we can see the erosion of the blood cells and so forth. The, the, this flesh, fleshy erodes and it's just eroded down here. That's those, those carbon macromolecules. This is tendon and that to me looks like a, a, a muscle bundle or it could be an offshoot of the tendon heading to a different direction. But you see this, you, you see this structure right around here? You see these little pinchy bundles? That's what a tendon or, or muscle fibers look like. They, they're very similar, but the tendons don't have any stretch to them. Basically, they're very, very tight and under tension. Muscles have what they call sarcomeres, and they, they, they pinch in and out. The tendon just has just a little bit of give, that's all. And that is the interface between the anchor, which shouldn't give at all. And then this gives a little bit, and then the muscles do the pulling and so forth between them. You know, that's, and, and any anatomist that looks at this, I would like to speak to them if they say that that's not what I'm saying it is. That is a tendon enthesis. Now there's, you'd have to be a good anatomist. Most anatomists don't really work into this, to understand this a lot because they're working on organs and so forth. But this is an anchor. Now I do work with people that are physical anatomist and 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 nobody's ever questioned my uh, opinion of what it is a lot of people don't want to speak about it because <laughs> it's it's a it's a career destroyer I'm gonna leave it at this they have no idea what's out in space you see these things oh that's a crater impact that's a crater impact this is the Lucy mission they're looking at Trojan asteroids well let me show you what that actually is I believe that's where these craters come from. These are the little fibrils that hold on to this. It's the same kind of a tendon enthesis. The other one was a bigger one, and it broke off as a stalk right up here, which is called the abrupt transition. It's basically about like in here somewhere. Look at this. China's sending a nuclear power mission to Neptune. Nobody's paying any attention to what's local. All right, this is an extremely simplified version of a tendon enthesis. Inside the bone, there's an anchor, that anchor ball. Then those little straps come out, and then you get into your muscle, and the muscles pull in and out. This has very little ability to move, but it's tougher than hell. That's why these, these last forever in the ground. These just turn into clay, really into dirt and mud. These don't, don't go bad easily. Okay, so now that you're an anatomist, <laughs> that's the anchor, these are the tendon straps, this is where the muscle's broken away, and just turns into mud, really, and it would just erode easily in space. Now, that is a muscle bundle, uh, apparently, which gives it some other way to move around. You see this? This is 40 meters, that's 120 feet, this distance here, so you got like... 300 feet or more across this. These little spots here, all these little dimples are what they call dragon balls and this is what smokes off out of here because that is literally going to feed blood vessels. That's how you see all this, every one of those are little blood vessels. Every single cell in every single body of every single creature has to be continuously flushed with blood every four minutes or so or you're dead. So how are you going to do it? You, there's a million of these little dots. If you can see that closely enough, you, sh you should be able to see how those aren't just dimples. <laughs> those, are, those are blood vessels. Okay, you know the astronauts say it smells like steak. That's because this is where blood is blown off. These are the anchors that held that ball into muscle or bone or something. And that is the stalk that runs up to the muscle. The muscle started here, but it broke. These are squirting out. They're being blown back, yes, because the thing must be moving in this direction. So they, they're, they're going to dust off of there, absolutely. But that's not just being blown off of there. That's being boiled out of there. And it's not burning over here, but it is here only because it's blood. That's why space smells like sirloin. All right, the reason space smells like steak and burning metals is because metals and metalloids are in your blood, and here's all the different types of them and the levels. 
you're saturated with metals. In space, when you it, 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 a direct impact of light close enough excites those molecules enough where they disassociate and then they go into the vacuum, which is not a vacuum of space, as they're independent little molecules and they can smell them like, like welding fumes. Okay, so let's try to understand the size of 67P. I say it's in tendinanthesis. <laughs> you know how big they are in us. They're microscopic. This is Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> And that is 67P in comparison to Raleigh. Now, as you know, I made my statements what I think it is. And um, everything that I'm showing you supports that. So, if, if you, we can't engage in reality, we're just an exercise of mental gymnastics to try to get around reality. And I'm done with that. It's up to you to handle it the way you want. Okay, so I have the upgraded version of Zoom, so I can do meetings with people around the world, present my evidence, have them present theirs. Everybody's talking about observing plate tectonics and observing global warming and what's in space and so forth. I have a lot of data, and I also have a lot of stuff on the light research. Once again, I have the Zoom, and I want to engage with the top physicists. This is the new model. It's called dipole flood theory and what it does is it t says everything is made of these particles basically a muon and electron neutrino muon electron neutrino back to back as two bar magnets they make a photon a photon is just like this precisely identical to what they found at fermi lab right there the black one and the glowy one here they are right here all right, there's the black one and the glowy one. And that's a, this one here is a banger, and it is. And this one here can squish down, and it does. And we actually created those particles by sending them through a venturi, and we separated to get sterile muons and electron showers precisely here, as CERN and everybody else. So I want some experts. Like I said, I have the Zoom. I'm perfectly willing to engage and I can show my evidence because I have it in a whole realm of areas. I don't I, I won't present one thing that isn't supported by by some material evidence. I don't go that other route and make claims that I can't back up. So I'm asking for any experts to chime in. You know if you feel like you're an expert and you work at CERN or anywhere any any place where you have some credential and you think that you can can speak with me about this I love it you know I'm not putting I'm not trying to insult anybody I just need to have some discussion about it that's all I'm asking for all right I love you all thank you